Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Can I be real with you? Hey, what's up? Um, I'm glad you guys are back. I'm watching part two of um, when the sex is good. Um, I guess we we'll just jump right into it. Uh, so growing up, um, obviously I didn't have a daddy, and I used to always wonder, or often wonder to myself, I'm like, like what did I do? Like, I thought I did something to him for him not to want to claim me as his son. You know what I'm saying? A few times I have saw saw in my life, you know, just thinking about, it, I probably. I probably seen my daddy, and this is kind of sad. In ten years, I've physically probably seen my daddy probably about ten times. I, I I've really as and many times I would think I seen him. That I mean, his face is so distinct. And the thing about him, I have my daddy complexion. My mom, and my grandma, and even my little brother. They're they're not light skinned but they're much lighter than me. I'm, I'm the only um, I'm the only uh, dark sheep in the family, so to speak. Um, I used to think that I did something to him because I'm like, it seemed like he took care of all his other children except for me. Like I was the only one. Come to find out that um, obviously I wasn't the only one. Like it's, it's a lot of information to be revealed in a very short time without giving you the whole background story. But that's basically what it was. And just to show you how small this world is, I never forget I was at my cousin's house um, in Carroll City, and. Um, I was walking in the back of a house, and I was just going down the street to do whatever. And across the street, not even across the street, I was walking somebody by some fences, and I thought I saw uh, his wife, my dad's wife. And mind you, I haven't seen these people for years and years and years. So when I saw her, I mean, she was sitting on a porch, and you know, I was just walking by. It wasn't like I was going in slow motion. I had time to really scope her out and really make sure that was her. I'm like, that looked like his wife. Wow. So, <laughs> so on my way back, who did I see coming out the car? My brother. Last time I checked, this nigga was upstate playing football somewhere, and last time he knew, I was in Georgia. And what a coincidence of time that I happened to be walking back home to my cousin's house and he get out of the car. And then um, I was like, I was making sure I was like, is, is your daddy in the house? Because I ain't trying to see him, whatever I said. And he said, nah, he ain't going to come out there. Or he said he wasn't there. Something like that, he said. Uh, somebody done ran him out, probably his, Mar his, his wife, Marsha, or whatever, came out the house. And <laughs> no, she didn't come out the house. My daddy came out the house. I'm like, ugh. Uh, police! He just taking his like a goat gulping, <laughs> like a horse. Like it was just like when you don't like somebody, you hate everything about him. And it, like I really did not like him. Like this, he trifling. Like you, how you a trifling grown ass man? Like you in your fifties, nigga. Like you need to get your life together. What are you talking about? So anyway, he, he talked to me like he just talked to me yesterday, nigga. I don't know you. He said so, and you know on that side of my family, they call me. Everybody calls me Rico. So um. He's like, yo, what's up, son? How you been doing? What you been doing? Oh, I seen your, your prom picture and your homecoming picture. I was like, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah. And I think this is the time when Obama was getting elected for the first time or whatever. He's like, yeah, the president thing is about the homes and insurance. He's like, you know, matter of fact, I'm finna uh, move down the street if you want to come see me. You know where I stay at now. Could you imagine the thoughts that was running through my head? My nigga. My daddy, are you serious? You just said to your son that I know where you stay? You're the daddy. You're the grown up. You think I'm supposed to chase you down? Oh, you gotta quit. You gotta twist it. You gotta so twist it. And so I, I had went back home and I told my um, my cousin they was ready to fight. It's like, oh, that nigga. It was so funny. Like, it's like, that's what family is for, to beat up people. Like, it just gives you comfort and peace of mind. Like, yes, let's go beat his ass. So, um, <laughs> so, I mean, it was just one of those situations, like, it reminded me of a person that you don't need to deal with. And that was just trifling. And I'm thinking, um, I just don't understand how people can be of age and still have no wisdom. Have no knowledge of what life really is. 
you think as your son, you have the right and the audacity and the wherewithal to tell me, I know where you stay. Come and see about you. I'm the child. You know what I'm saying? You abandoned me. I didn't abandon you. My mama didn't keep me away from you. My grandma didn't keep me away from you. What's the issue? You just seen me after years and years and years, and that's the best you can come up with? Like, seriously, dude? Like, I have no respect for you. And see, that's why it was so easy for me to run through dudes because every dude I ran into, and subconsciously thinking, they reminded me of him. Just liars, like playing games, simple-minded games, making up lame excuses. And I tried my best, and I've tried my best not to be that lame ass nigga like I didn't want to be like that I don't want to be like my daddy whenever I decide I want to have kids you know what I'm saying I don't want to be I don't care if I'm with the mom or not it doesn't matter you know what I'm saying it's not about being Christian 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 but regardless you have responsibilities when you have a child I don't care if it was on purpose or by accident take care of that child don't make up excuses talking about the mama this mama that go to court and it's, I used to always say this about my dad you can say my mama and grandma kept me away from you okay so what if they did then what if you love me if you wanted to be with me that much if you wanted to be a significant per a person in my life that i will always remember that i will always recognize you as my father the one that took care of me and was there when i needed him you would have went to court and did what you had to do did you do that no when i was with you did you make sure it was an unforgettable time no I remember I probably spent one night with my dad halfway. I remember I was sleeping in the bed. He was watching TV. I think it was like Tales of Crip or something. And I always remember he was like a heavy chain smoker. Like he always smoking cigarettes with his deep raspy ass voice. It was like it was always something going on with this nigga. And I don't know if I don't think he was ever on drugs, but he he seemed to be a womanizer. I don't know what his problem was. He was just doing too much. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm not there to figure out his life. I just know how he affected my life. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm not saying it was his fault that I was promiscuous or that I had I turned out gay or bisexual or straight or anything like that. But what he did did affect it. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm just getting to the point where I'm able to recognize it. You know, it's been some years since I recognized it. But it's, it's hard to align your life up with what you how you know you can live versus what feels almost natural you know what i'm saying my desires for men it, it, it felt natural in a sense but it felt unnatural like i felt like i was doing it because i didn't have a daddy i didn't feel like i didn't feel like i was doing it because you know i, I don't know i feel like i was running away from something but i was running to it at the same time you know what i'm saying i'm, I'm running and see and see with women i have so much more respect for women and see, that's why the girls I've been with, I, and even the girls I've been with up until this day, I can never treat them like I do niggas. Now, some, I, I can think of one female that, I, you, you know, she really tried it, and, you know, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, females overall, you know, you expect certain things from females. And then you also expect certain things from, you know, when you're dealing with dudes. But, you know... That's basically what it is, and I was just asking the Lord, like, I, I, I don't know what's going on, Lord, but I really need your help, and I just, I felt, and I used to say this to the Lord, like, I felt, Lord, Jesus, I just feel like if I had a daddy in my life, like, my life would be so much different, like, I would be with a woman, I would never have a desire to be with another man, you know what I'm saying, aside from, like, those experiences when I had a kid, as a kid, you know, and, you know, I've had all these experiences and this and this and that and this this, this is another random um story and i got a thousand of them sitting right i'll never forget i was in sixth grade i was um the new kid in class i remember the teacher named mr plumber big old fat gorilla looking monkey nigga um it's not like I'm still upset and angry and bitter about it huh <laughs> but it's just the truth he he he, he was he was huge he looked like Mr. Egg, like, he, I'm going to tell you exactly who he looked like. He looked like um, Lavelle Crawford. He was, he wasn't that big, but he was, he was fat and wide, like, I don't know, whatever shape this is, but not a Coke bottle. It was just like, something that's not desirable. So anyway, I remember the teacher had asked everybody to write in a journal, and um, whatever the, the subject line was, this particular dude, he started the story off, and you know how, you're in sixth grade, you know, maybe you don't put it together that quick, and he just started reading up and said, it's this dude in my class, and he didn't say my name, and he said, 
and he acts like a girl and he's he's like he's a sissy and the teacher kind of started laughing and then the boy looked over at me and everybody just started clowning and it's like I knew he was talking about me obviously and it just I, I could never get over it it wasn't even the kids that I was bothered by out I, I I was bothered mostly by the teacher it just I, I, I mean I cried I don't think nobody saw me, but I put my head down, and like, it just was not a pleasant experience. And I'm thinking, like, like I never did nothing to these kids, nothing. I don't even know these people, and they feel so comfortable. Like, you can write an essay about me, like, really? Like, those things are like kind of tragic. Like, this, and see, you have to kids blow up schools. Like, you can't. Just be talking to kids. You don't know what kids are capable of. You know what I'm saying? You can't put too much by them these days. You understand what I'm saying? But I'm so glad that God kept because I had thoughts of suicide and I was home by myself so often. It really wouldn't be hard that it wouldn't be hard to get to get away with a lot. And thank God I wasn't a troublesome kid because I could have gotten in a lot of trouble because there was nobody around a lot of times to keep me away from that, and I was the only child. So. Who was there to stop me? But, um, you know, for some reason, even as an adult at 24, it's like I have my struggles. But no matter what, I'm still here. No matter what I'm dealing with right now, God still loves me just the same. He loves me just the same. And he understands everything that I experience. I experienced. He, he, he knows about it. He knew about it. When it happened to me, it wasn't brand new information to him. You know what I'm saying? He wanted me to turn to him for comfort, even at a young age. And you know, all these songs, all this music that, you know, nobody has heard and I haven't birthed to the world per se, you know, the songs that I hold close to my heart, he's going to use that for his glory. You understand what I'm saying? And though I'm far from perfect and I still got a long way to go, God knows my heart. And, you know, it's hard to get away from addiction especially sex sex has a special stronghold it's, it's different from from drugs it's almost like a drug you might as well say you know what i'm saying you know and that's why i'm not quick to judge people because you can't afford to judge nobody you, you don't know their story you know what i'm saying and i guess this will be a part two this is gonna be the awakening like with four, four or five parts but um oh, that's what it is thank you guys for sticking around for being patient with me I know, I hope this, this is best for you thus far, because as I'm talking, I'm going back in my mind, like, man, I, I really forgot I haven't, I had even experienced that. So, um, make sure you guys like this video, subscribe, um, comment, inbox me, let me know if it's helping you, share this video, do what you gotta do, let me know that I'm saying something that you guys can relate to. And if you know anybody going through this, or uh, feel like this video can bless somebody, Give it to them. Share it with them. Tell them to watch me. Do whatever you got to do. Because people are dying. People need some inspiration. Sometimes all people... All I'm going to tell you is, look at the news. Read the papers. Search on the internet. And you'll see that people are killing themselves. They are dying. They may not be people that you know on a personal level. But people need to hear stuff like this. I don't care if they gay straight by. You feel like they DL or something like that. Put it in their inbox. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But people need to know for a fact that they're not alone in the struggle. And that God is real and he's able to deliver. He brings peace of mind. I know about peace of mind. He's kept my mind. You hear what I'm saying? And that's all I'm going to say for now. Um, be easy. All the way driven.